and welcome to the works. I'm Ben Peltier. And I'm Ben Che. After months of cancelled concerts, the Hong Kong Philharmonic is finally planning to perform in front of an audience in the concert hall. Later in the show, pianist Vanessa Wong will be with us to talk about her upcoming performance of Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue with the orchestra. Artist Chen Wai Lap's works are often very personal and explore his inner self. His early works were inspired by memories of secondary school life, and many focused on the social constructs of the education system and his sense of identity growing up in post-colonial Hong Kong. In his latest work, he talks about his mother. Chan Wai Lap's artistic journey started in 2010 when he and his schoolmate Yao Kuo Kung got together to found the art collective Dirty Paper. His works often draw inspiration from his daily life. In recent years, he has begun to work on solo projects. Last year, he won the Arts Development Council Award for Young Artists in Visual Arts. Oh, 把一张台上给别人印象或者买回家的那张纸就不会再干净一张纸记载了很多东西在上面由一出世你就会有一张出世纸去打支针或者去看医生都会有一张医生卡复诊卡 Apart from taking part in flea markets and exhibitions, Chan has also participated in artist residency programs in New York and Istanbul, as well as at Hong Kong's Tycoon. Actually, 但当你个人一跳开了去一个陌生的环境那一刻是很多东西很快和很有感受 a few years ago, he began using anecdotes about his family and himself to create his first artist book. He sees it as a way for his friends and family to understand him better as an artist. 有時候我會想做創作 
Chan Wai Lap's latest artist book, Mum, Do You Know Who I Am?, was inspired by an incident in which his mother developed transient amnesia one morning last summer. He says the process of making it brought them even closer together. Go 串連這個故事就好像很複雜、很混亂的去表達 Kuyo 可能人越大個,就會明白其實很多東西不是必然 Chan Wai Lap's artist book was showcased in the art book pop-up Booked at Tycoon two weeks ago. It was the second time he had participated in this annual event. I think it's a bit more of a design form. I was in a tent and I was able to talk to the audience about what I was talking about. I was able to talk to the audience about it. 這個我也很出奇 Memories of growing up and of her surroundings also provide fruitful inspiration for painter Carmen Ng. Ng recalls that when she was small, she and her siblings loved to sit on the front seats on the upper deck of buses, where she'd draw on the condensation on the windows and make her earliest pictures. On show at Karen Weber, Flowers in the Window includes watercolor paintings of Hong Kong's cityscape and imaginative, dreamlike images.
Welcome back. Good news for concert goers. After months of suspension of live music performances due to the outbreak of the fourth wave of COVID-19, the Hong Kong Philharmonic Orchestra is returning to the Cultural Center Concert Hall with stringent health and safety measures. This Friday, pianist Vanessa Wong is playing with the orchestra in a concert that includes music by Gina Stera, Gershwin and Dvorak. And she's here with us right now. Vanessa, it's a delight to have you back in our studio so soon after the last time. Thank you. Uh, and Happy in fact, for a very good reason as well, yeah. that concerts are starting again in Hong Kong in a major way. And by that, I mean the Hong Kong Philharmonic and you as soloist. Yes. Um, in fact, that's not the first time that you've performed with the mm -hmm. Hong Kong Philharmonic, is it? Mm -hmm. so can you tell me about the first time that you played with the Phil? Yeah, uh, the first time I performed with Hong Kong Phil was, I think, was uh, when I was um, 15. Um, I, I still wear, I, I wear a, I wore a, a purple long, long dress. <laughs> I was playing the Beethoven concerto by then, and this time I'm playing the Gershwin's Wrestling Blue. So a, a lot of contrast, and I think that um, it might be interesting to sort of compare your thought process as you, as you prepare for this upcoming project with the Hong Kong Philharmonic compared to the previous time mm -hmm. when you were obviously much younger and playing a completely different repertoire as well. Mm -hmm. So I imagine your entire mindset or your approach to the project is very different now. Yeah, um, as, as you said, because I was very young uh, when I was 15, so I am kind of not too familiar with um, a lot of settings like how the orchestra runs. And this time I feel much uh, different because I am, I am a, a grown up you know, in, in size and age, of course, too. But um, I'm also more familiar with the, the orchestra and how I can interact with the orchestra. So it feels um, very different, actually. Yeah. I, I imagine that not only you, yourself and uh, coming to it uh, in a, as a more mature musician, that's one aspect, but also the repertoire is so entirely different, uh, contrasting Beethoven to Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. Uh, both great composers for the piano, of course, uh, uh, you know, Beethoven and Gershwin, but very different in style. And yes. so uh, I imagine that that preparation is also different. Yes. How, um, how would you contrast that? Yes, um, the, the two works are uh, really different, you know, because Beethoven are uh, very uh, standard classical repertoire, while the Rhapsody in Blue is kind of is one of the, I think it's one of the first jazz uh, jazz concerto, not jazz concerto, but maybe uh, putting jazz element into a classical concerto. This is one of the, one of the first ones. So it's a kind of very revolutionary, you know, even when Gershwin premiered that piece at, at that time, you know, it's this very revolutionary. So um, very, very different settings, you know. Uh, Beethoven, you need to be very rational. And Gershwin, you need to be just spontaneous and enjoy the, like the, the improvisation, being a little bit improvising. Yeah. One of the curious things about the Gershwin in particular, uh, as a piece, the Rhapsody in Blue, is that it has so many different versions. And, and in fact, in 1924, Gershwin premiered it with the Paul Whiteman jazz band, essentially. It was yes. like a 23-piece jazz ensemble with saxophones and the rest of it. Yes. And it wasn't until 1942 that Ferd Graffet and the full orchestra version came mm -hmm. out. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it didn't stop there, though, be, mm -hmm. because famous versions for two pianos and even one piano have been done by Gershwin yes. himself. So this is a rather unusual case. Mm -hmm. of, of a, a piece that has so many different versions, isn't it? Yes, uh, it, it has uh, so many versions, so it can be used in different format and different settings, too. Yeah, so um, this time, of course, it's the orchestral version, so it feels um, more grand, you know. You can feel the, the classical elements in the, in the jazz, and jazz, uh, you know, you can combine the jazz element with the classical features. So, in preparing this, this piece of music, one of the things that often happens is that you'll communicate with the, the conductor that you're going to be working with. Mm -hmm. In this case, the conductor that you're going to be working with was sitting in three weeks of quarantine in order yeah. to come to Hong Kong to take part in these two concerts on Friday and Sunday. Yes. Um, so, that must have been part of the, the new normal, as they say, uh, where yeah. you're, you're sort of communicating by Zoom. 
right? Yeah, we had a, a, um, a video call during his quarantine to uh, kind of talk about the, the piece. And uh, it went quite well, you know. He had a lot of uh, constructive ideas. So it has been a new, I think it's a new situation for the musicians today. You know, as we are getting used to meeting through phone calls yeah, instead of you know meeting in person. Of course, we we need that too, but uh, right now, um, meeting through video calls have been is more frequently used. Now, now. I it, I understand that that type of communication, although you say it's it's more and more frequent, it's still not really to the point technologically where you're actually rehearsing together, right? Mm -hmm. No, we just use by words, so you know we have to be articulate. <laughs> yeah. Also, and, a challenge for all musicians these days, not only for incoming musicians to Hong Kong, but musicians like yourself, uh, based in Hong Kong or living here, and then not able to travel elsewhere to take part in concerts or collaborate with other musicians. That mm -hmm. must be quite a challenge. Yeah, um, and it's also hard for overseas artists to come to Hong Kong too. So. Um, I think it's very precious chance this time to work with an overseas artist. Yeah. Well, we've certainly spoken enough about the Gershwin. What I'd love to do is hear a bit of the Gershwin, maybe in the solo piano version, <laughs> given our studio. So I'm looking forward to that. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. 